I'm Mike Quackenbush. I would like to address recent allegations which have surfaced in the last three days about myself and people under my supervision. These are very serious allegations, and I want to be clear. This is entirely separate from the fictional world of pro wrestling storylines, characters, etc. I want to take the time to go over all the points raised. And even though much of this will be difficult to hear, it is important that you know everything. So stay with me until the end, please. And I want to start by offering an apology to anybody who read these allegations and felt embarrassment or disappointment as a result. I am sorry for that. I'm going to begin with the longest of these allegations, which comprises seven messages across two tweets offered anonymously by a student enrolled at my wrestling school between 2016 and 2019, when we were situated in Philadelphia holding a lease on Wingate Street. Because this accuser came forward anonymously, I will maintain their privacy. If they choose to identify themselves, that is their decision to make, not mine. I wish to start with the most distressing of the points raised in this allegation. Her allegations take the form of a narrative, and in her story, she alleges that a separate trainee went to one of my coach's private residences, became blackout drunk, and is concerned that she was assaulted. Until a few days ago, I had never heard this allegation, and given I could not know what took place inside one of my coach's private residences, I want to give the benefit of the doubt to the accuser, and I believe this allegation the way it is described. I denounce this behavior, and upon learning of this just a few days ago, I investigated, and a member of my staff was able to contact someone close to the situation. I am relieved that the coach cited in this allegation was removed several months ago. Regardless, safeguards must be put in place to ensure something of this nature never happens again. This anonymous accuser further alleges that during a road trip, a male performer exposed his genitals to her in a hotel room. And though I have no first-hand knowledge of this event, that trip was organized under my purview. Therefore, I accept full responsibility for this, and I must be the one to offer an apology. And I am sorry that this occurred. After the fact, a coach alerted me of unprofessional behavior while on the road, and acting on that report, disciplinary measures were taken. But this level of detail was unknown to me until I read the allegation. And furthermore, a separate allegation came forward about special treatment being offered to a trainee who was accommodated with an individual hotel room. And I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that if a trainee was ever the sole occupant of a hotel room while on the road, it is because they paid for that accommodation or an error was made, not because of special or preferential treatment extended to anyone. This accuser also details an in-ring injury which took place in August of 2017, resulting in a serious leg and ankle injury. They claim that after the fact, jokes were made, calling this a, quote, accident on purpose, end quote. I did not hear anyone make jokes about this, and I remember the event vividly because I was in the ring for it and also present at the hospital after the fact. However, because I cannot be everywhere and hear everything, it is possible someone did make that joke. So I believe the accuser, and I accept responsibility for that. And I am sorry if anyone tried to make light of that situation. It is inappropriate. But I deny the assertion that a trainee of ours would be deliberately injured. That is entirely against my ethos as a person, as a performer, as a trainer, and even those things aside, just as a business person who must ensure the safety of his paying clients. Lastly, from this particular allegation, the accuser claims to have been manipulated or gaslit through the process of passing an evaluation, then later being asked to take the evaluation once again and failing the evaluation. The accuser is not alone in the process of being reevaluated and having regressed in the period of time between evaluations. In this case, the accuser did regress and upon reevaluation lacked sufficient upper body strength to control another person's body to the mat with safety. I deny this as any wrongdoing. I do not believe the circumstance of being reevaluated rises to satisfy the definition of a manipulation or gaslighting of any sort. Furthermore, to compare these experiences to the conduct and behavior of Jeffrey Epstein is an assertion I entirely reject and deny.
This former trainee of mine is neither the first nor the last who had a frustrating experience mastering the craft. However, upon reporting to me that she would not be continuing training, in our parting dialogue in 2019, she stated, quote, I don't have the money and I never really had enough time. It was such an amazing experience. Thanks for everything, end quote. Moving on, another anonymous accuser alleges that I was protecting someone from another relationship and later chose to brag about sexual conquests. I deny this allegation. To be clear to all, I do not discuss my sex life publicly, period. I am fastidiously private on this topic and I wholeheartedly deny this allegation. A further allegation asserts that I was involved in a relationship with a trainee, implying that that relationship was anything other than professional. And I wanna be crystal clear on this point. At exactly two points in my life, I have been involved in a personal relationship with an active Chikara performer. Both were consenting adults, and both are free to disclose whatever they choose to about that. But their privacy is not mine to revoke. To be clear though, I have never been involved in that type of relationship with a trainee. An anonymous accuser alleges that during a show, I made a remark in the locker room about, quote, an attractive female fan in the audience, end quote. And that later, a trainee claimed to have had sex with that fan. But I do not recall making this remark, nor the subsequent claim on the part of my trainee. Therefore, I give the accuser the benefit of the doubt, and I accept responsibility for both these remarks. And if they were offensive or hurtful, then I am sorry. From a tweet, on September 23rd, 2018, we auditioned Lola for an on-screen interviewing role. Lola alleges that I asked her to dinner after the show and seemed, quote, off, end of quote, when asked about her family coming along. And I believe this allegation because as was our tradition during this era of Chikara, my significant other and I would organize the performers, most typically at the Mayfair Diner on Frankfurt Avenue, after the events to decompress and to bond. And this event was not open to family members. I don't recall how things were left with Lola after that because both my partner and I needed to leave mid-event due to an emergency and we did not return. However, it is worth noting that Lola's feelings about this event are valid. And she has gone on to say that this made her feel disgusted, sick, and betrayed. And for making her feel those things, I am sorry, Lola. There is an anonymous accuser alleging that someone booked by me used an inappropriate term to refer to a member of the Chikara family with autism. And it is entirely clear to me who this is in reference to because a beloved figure in our history, Steve Weiner, is very open about discussing his autism. And Steve was a regular with us in 2010 and 2011. Even though I did not witness this remark, I believe this allegation. And I firstly and most prominently want to apologize to my friend Steven. Steven, I am sorry. You deserve better. This should not have been said. There are several people in my life, including my friend Steven, who have autism. And I have had to learn how hurtful the R word is to them. Simply put, if this was said by someone at one of my shows or at my school, then I accept full responsibility. And once again, Stephen, I am sorry. And to anyone else impacted by that, I am sorry. That tweet goes on to allege that I am a narcissist. And to someone who might have known me during that time frame, I don't doubt I may have displayed behavior that matches that allegation. If you were hurt by that behavior, on my part, please know I am sorry. From a tweet as well as a separate Instagram post that accuses me of breaking ties abruptly with people in a way that makes them feel banished or ghosted, I am certain that I am guilty of this. I accept this blame. I am far too delinquent in maintaining lines of communication. And if I have hurt you in that way, I want you to know I am sorry. And if you happen to be watching, and we need to find closure, reconciliation, or anything else, my email and my phone number have not changed in the last 20 years, and I am here for whatever feels appropriate to you, and also, I am sorry. A series of anonymous allegations were brought by a former trainee 
who was at my school when it was situated in Huntington Valley. We held a lease there in 2011 and 2012. And this anonymous accuser alleges that one of my trainers randomly asked them if they were called gay in high school. I was not witness to this remark. Therefore, I give the benefit of the doubt to the accuser, and I believe this allegation as it is described. I did not do enough to change the culture around my school in that period of time, and the failure here is mine. I accept the responsibility. And as the person in charge, you are owed an apology for being made to feel uncomfortable at my school. Therefore, I want you to know, I am sorry. Please bear with me just a little bit longer. Um, I'm just absolutely exhausted by the process of trying to make this, but we do need to talk about one more thing from when we were in Huntington Valley in 2011 and 12, when someone alleges that the same anonymous accuser alleges uh, that I use homophobic language, racist or misogynist language during practice. And this part I must own. I am certain that I made homophobic remarks during this time period. And although I do not recall making other types of inaf or inappropriate or offensive remarks during that period of time, I, I must be open to the fact that since I don't recall those things, I should own them. I accept responsibility. I am responsible for those things and I believe the allegations as they are reported because I know I said ignorant things in my past and I have to own that. So to the people that are disappointed by that or who I've hurt or I've offended, I want you to know that I am sorry. And I will never forget the exit interview I had with this trainee when they parted ways with me training at my school and they told me how hurtful it was to them to hear that word said aloud. That made me realize how hurtful it was and how badly we needed to change the culture around our training. And maybe it sounds weird to say, but I am thankful for the lesson that you taught me that day. And I'm sorry. I have read and reread all of these, including all of your comments, especially from those of you who have lacked the full context for understanding. And I want you to know, if I have failed you, if I've hurt you, if I've offended you, I am sorry. And to those of you I've disappointed, I'm sorry to you too, you're owed that apology. But please take this away. Please, I'm urging you remember this. We have to continue to listen with compassion and with empathy to the people who are speaking out. And we've got to engage in real, serious self-reflection. Look at the things that we've all said and done and that we've got to change to be better. <laughs> and if you're hearing that from me and you're wondering, well, Mike, how can you realistically say that? Given what you've gone through in the last 72 hours, And what we all need to understand is this. The people who are hurting the most right now, they are the ones who must be heard the most. Because if they are never heard, they are never going to start healing. And we all have a role to play in that. Okay?